Hey there. Today we're going to do something simple. We're going to do a two-pole toggle switch. Very meat and potatoes. It's basic, basic. It's about as basic as you get with a switch. Um, it's on, off. No LEDs, no bells and whistles. Uh, some people have asked about it and uh, thought, sure, why not stick one up there in case somebody needs it. So let's get right into it. Um, first you'll need the toggle switch. As I said, it's a simple two-pole on off screw or push through screw the lock nut on the side outside it hooks it in and you'll need a couple of pieces of wire to represent the wire you're going to be connecting into and you'll need a couple of spade ends and of course some trusty heat shrink so we have everything in place so first things first, you're going to want to tin your wires. That includes stripping a little bit off of the end or the insulation off a little bit of the end. As I've said before, you don't really need to have much wire bared. In fact, you only want as much as you need to go into the clips. Anything else is a waste. So we'll start by tinning the ends of these wires. That just helps to keep them solid and go into the clips better. They stay on the clips better. They last longer, just all around the right thing to do. So, and you don't have to necessarily tin your ends, but when you don't and you have your wires stripped, and without the tinned ends, you squish the threads, right? And that creates spaces in between. You could get possibly get heat. You might definitely get corrosion of some sort. So for the time it takes you to do it, I highly recommend doing that. Okay, so after that, we will take the ends and measure exactly how much we need. So for this one, we're gonna hack off a little bit here. And we know that's gonna be the case with this one as well. So we'll hack off some of that one. And check and see yeah it's about right so depending on your tools and that some of them have uh, slots and whatnot to make crimping easier this one does other ones don't you might have to use needle nose pliers to bend the clips over um, these ones actually have a secondary set of clips on them that I do use needle nose on just because it's been the easiest way to do it so that one's done, and now this one. Okay, now this is to go onto your switch. Now, if represented in your vehicle or wherever you plan to be putting this, you would find the power wire that you are wanting to connect into, or sorry, to operate. So if it's going to a set of lights or um, whatever you happen to go to a pump whatever you will cut the power wire to that and then you insert the switch in the middle of that so you will have the load on one side of the cut you have made and your source on the other side of the cut that you've made and the switch completes the circuit and now it's switchable so that should make sense now I like to use heat shrink on most connections stuff's wonderful and expensive and works really really well so we'll get the heat gun going here myself a reworking station and it works really well. I highly recommend getting one if you don't have it. So there you go. That is pretty much all there is to a two-pole switch. 
Um, it's very simple, very basic, and won't take you very long to hook it in. This one, like I said, is not LED, it's nothing fancy. You would drill a hole in the place where you want to install the switch. There's a screw ring on the outside of it, and when you take that off, you push the switch through. There's a spacer as well, helps it keep locked in place, or you can have it moved elsewhere. Um, so you push it through wherever you're trying to mount it, obviously. You drill the hole just to the outside edge of the threads on the switch itself. Not the top of the switch, but the thread. So you want to make the hole the same diameter as the outside of these threads. And then once you have that on, you simply screw the ring back in place and that switch is now locked in place. Um, that's a probably the best method. Some people will hot glue them or epoxy them in place, but these switches do not have an indefinite life expectancy. So if you do that and the switch breaks, then you have a whole hassle to get it out of there. It's opening up a big can of worms. These, the screw in method works really well and it, it lasts the life of the switch usually. So um, yeah, that is how you wire in a two pole switch. One thing I would like to mention is a newish way to um, connect into an existing wire. Rather than to cut it or to um, bear the insulation, you can get these clips. They've been around for a little while now, they're, but they're not really well known. They're well known in some configurations of them, but this one is actually a little different. So um, with this, it is a way to connect into an existing wire and basically just tap into it so you can run your switch and um, whatever accessories you have connected to the switch off of that wire without having to cut this wire. So first thing you will need is a trink, obviously, and then the clip portion of this goes onto here. And we give that a crimp. You want to crimp it you don't want to crush it obviously and now if this was the your power wire you would connect into this like so and you give it a squish so that it locks in place got a locking on the front you can undo it if you need to after and now your spade bit portion of it connects into there like that you've now effectively connected into this power wire without having to cut it so that you can run your accessories off of it you would then take your heat shrink run it down to the end over top of the connection There you go, voila. We now have a way to connect into the existing wire, an ignition wire, for instance. If you want your accessory only on when the ACC is on and the key, then you can connect into that wire without actually having to cut it or trace back to the fuse box or whatever. So you can connect your accessories in much faster, much easier, and considerably safer than having to do it with a, a cut wire and added connections and may change the dynamics of your electrical system if you're unfortunate enough to have one of those type of computers in your car or truck and yeah so check these out they're available everywhere i got them off of ebay real cheap obviously from china so again thank you for watching and uh until next time take it easy